Hello everyone. Uh, I welcome you all to the series Learn Cybersecurity with Ravi. Uh, this one is Checkpoint Dedicated uh, Tutorial and we are at lecture number two. Uh, day one, first of lecture number two. The day one, lecture number one is already finished. I will request all of you uh, just to go through the lecture number one. Lecture number one have basically two concepts. One is the three-tier architecture and other is the smart console and then there is a lab as well okay the agenda of the lecture number two is to understand the different deployment modes and then we will also learn how to download the checkpoint ngx already for absolutely free and then that will help us to to create a virtual lab uh, to extend our learning as well as to demonstrate different uh, scenarios so now um, as as I can understand that, you know, um, as we have already gone through the architecture of the checkpoint, we understood that checkpoint architecture is a three-tier architecture. As being in a three-tier architecture, it has two. It has two critical roles. One of the roles is called gateway, and another of the important roles is called smart management server. In this slide, uh, whatever you see as this as this bricks is actually a firewall and whatever is M is basically management right so we have we have standalone deployment okay we have distributed deployment we have standalone full HA we have bridge mode and we have management HA now let me tell you about standalone The very basic fundamental of standalone deployment is just that you know there is just one hardware, okay, uh, or maybe one virtual machine, as in a way, and this one hardware has a management module plus firewall module, right, and if it is not a hardware if it is a virtual machine so then i will install the same management module plus firewall module into this okay so this is basically called a standalone as this is what we see there is a there is a standard appliance over here right and this appliance can actually play both the roles it can play management as well as firewall right this is what we see this is one, this is one, this is management plus firewall. Now, <clears throat> let us go to the distributed deployment. A distributed deployment, if I, if I talk about the theory, it says that two hardwares basically one hardware for management plus one hardware for gateway right or I'll say two virtual machines where you do not have appliances one virtual machine for management plus one virtual machine for gateway right so hypothetically let's say that uh, there is an organization cloudsec91.com right then here they have uh, that's the perimeter so here they have a firewall right this is the external interface this is uh, internal interface this is a firewall then this is a management appliance this is a core switch core switch is connected to the management let's say that right and then core switch is also connected to the firewall uh, this and this they are in the same VLAN 
right this is connected to the ISP router right this is basically your van this is your LAN right this is firewall this is management right so these are two different components these are two different either hardware appliances or two different virtual machines right now <clears throat> Why would I do that? That's the question. So where there is a standalone option available, where I can save my cost, where I can save money, where I can just install a firewall as well as management licenses on a on the same appliance. Why would I go for a distributed where I need to buy additional uh, hardware, right? Or may, maybe where I need to deploy additional virtual machine. Now the answer is very simple. The answer is that how big is your organization, right? How critical um, is the data posturing there? Uh, how efficiently have you done the sizing, right? If you understand all these questions very well, then then probably you will be able to find an answer that do you need to go with the standalone or do you need to go with the distributed? If I if I just try to extend this scenario. To that now, let's say that CloudSec 91 started with Delhi, right? But then later on, they have an office in Bangalore. Later then, then they have offices in Chennai. Maybe an office in um, Singapore, right? And then another office is in I like Malaysia, right? Let's say that, <laughs> that Malaysia, right? Now, in Bangalore, you have a capacity of 70 users. Here you have 80 users, 100 users, 60 users, right? You would like to deploy a firewall there locally. Each and every location have a firewall, right? What would you like to do now? You would like that the firewall is there, right? But then you do not want to invest into buying a management appliance. Remember that in Checkpoint, uh, the license for management server is more expensive than the license of the gateway but then here is an here is an advantage that one management server let's say that one management server license can manage up to five gateways so you had a gateway number one you have a gateway number two gateway number three gateway number four gateway number five absolutely wonderful return on investment for you with just one appliance, right? You will be able to manage this firewall. Uh, depending, so so this is the van side interface of these firewalls. You will be able to connect to this firewall over a van. From here over a van. From here over a van. From here over a van, right? You need to make policies appropriate on this firewall so that you should be able to connect to these firewalls. Uh, and then you have to build SIG process. You really need to go through my video number one where you will understand the three-way architecture. Okay. So this is basically distributed environment in a real sense, in a real production environment where you have multiple offices, right? You would like to have one management gateway and then you have multiple, where you have, where you have one management server and you have multiple gateways, okay? Now, let me talk about this, this option and then this option, right? Now, here, this is a management server, this is firewall. We know the difference between firewall and management server management server does not inspect traffic right does not inspect firewall does inspection so that means if 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 this box goes down let's say that for any reason maybe maybe hardware reason maybe any kind of configuration misconfiguration mistuning if this box goes down so then this is absolutely blunder right the whole production is down why not let's go with the standalone full HA? Here I can see that I have two appliances. I have done the similar investment that I have done, right? There is no additional license cost into that. It's just a matter of configuration. I have two appliances. This appliance is actually firewall plus management station. This is firewall plus management station. These firewalls are configured in uh, cluster X. And this management stations 
management one management two is configured into standard is configured into management HA okay. so if either of if either of the role goes down right then we have a standby role just to fulfill the purpose so this is standalone HA uh, I have a very detailed video on bridge mode. Hopefully, we'll cover bridge mode there. Let us talk on management HA. Now, <clears throat> I said that the firewall is uh, is is the one which is uh, which is doing the complete traffic processing for you. So let's say that here you have a firewalls, right? And then let's say that you have ten different firewalls, and all these ten firewalls are managed via this management server right now I have two scenarios for you the one scenario is an organization where where right there are there are not much changes to the security policies uh, if one management server goes down right we still have a time we can we can make it uh, you know up and running right but if there is a requirement where you know you have to make policies on a very regular basis okay where you have multiple customers uh, where you are managing their security policies you may come up with a request anytime to make a change on their firewall so probably that's the time when you need to think about management HA because you cannot afford to have a downtime of the management server okay remember that if management server goes down and if it was not standalone HA it will have no impact on your firewall. The firewall will keep working its way. The only problem is that if you need to install a policy or if you need to retrieve logs because the management server is also a log server. So in that case, you really need to think about management HA. So you can actually play, uh, you know, so you can actually have two different management appliances and then, you know, these two management appliances um, can actually become, you know, HA to each other one of the primary management box and then there is another management box right so these are the different deployment modes that I have in terms of appliances you really need to understand that you know if I say that um, the management I feel like I, I, I do not have space but then the management appliances comes in a series of uh, uh, 405, 410, then we have 525, and then larger one are 5050 and 5150. Right? So these all are examples of the management. If I talk about the firewall appliances, then then there is no limit, right? We have three different categories, small business, medium, large enterprises, data centers. So then there is a 700 series. Uh, we have 900 series. We have 1400 series. We have 3000 series. We have 6000 series. We have <laughs> maybe 15,400 series, 16,000 series. 23,000 series, maybe 800 series, 26,000, and very sexy appliances like 44,000 and 64,000. Huge boxes, massive, massive workload, massive throughput, expensive, fancy money. So there are different options available that you have, you know, which you can choose to buy different appliances on the basis of the need of your organization and on the basis of business that you are into. Now, so I believe, you know, uh, this deployment mode is done. You can even refer to my blogs where you can read more about it. You know, you can make notes out of it. Now, now the next one is that how will you download R80? Just because now you have learned that, uh, well, deployment mode is fine. Let's say that if I, if, if I want to go with the uh, standalone, right, that means, and if I do not have hardware appliances, then if I'm dependent on virtual machine, well, that's fine. I downloaded VMware Workstation, but then uh, now, but then what next, right? So next is that you need to download the R80 virtual machine, R80 image. This is what exactly you need to type in your Google. 
exactly type same hit enter you'll get this option right next is that something like uh, support center checkpoint.com will come up right and that's it just scroll down the page you'll see r80.10 gaia fresh install you'll see a button download there just click on download depending on the speed that you have it will be it will start you know downloading into it so this is all uh, this is very simple way just to download the r80 uh, iso image right once it is done okay uh, once it is done so then you will be able to uh, continue with the next videos as as well as the next series of labs the next video that we have right after this video is that is is the lab number 2 where i'm just going to demonstrate live right in front of you how to how to download the r80.10 iso image all right guys um, i um, i thank you all and i request you all just to subscribe and like this video and just leave comments you can also refer to my blog website and you can actually read material over there you can make notes out of it uh thanks guys thanks a lot have a great day goodbye